everybody welcome to it's my lifestyle I'm Elder Sharon Vincent I am so glad you stopped in today uh, this is a wonderful opportunity for us to connect I'm so thankful for it and I just desire that you share it with somebody else if you find it beneficial to you hopefully you can find a encouraging word or be inspired in some way and share it with somebody else if you haven't subscribed yet I don't know what you're waiting for come on click that I want you to subscribe so that we can connect again and again I appreciate it I really really do for those of you who have been sharing it and and telling others about it and commenting and giving giving your feedback I appreciate it I try my best to comment on each one because I want you to know from the bottom of my heart I really am thankful and humbled by this whole experience and I don't take it lightly it is of God and I just want desire that we continue to share these moments together today I just want to share this subject with you that freedom ain't free I know you're saying well she's up there talking like that to my ain't yeah mm -hmm. freedom ain't free you know, one of the most valuable things we own, believe it or not, it's not a car, it's not a house, it's not stocks, bonds, CDs, it's none of those things. The most valuable thing you own is your worship because it's your soul at its rawest form. It's all of who you really are. Your worship is valuable. It's the intimate part of you. It's, it's that close, personal part of you. It's the part of you that many times we're not so willing to share. You know, we like to stay composed. We like to stay, you know, in control. We don't like to unravel and give ourselves away just like that. But our worship is the most valuable part that we can give. And that's why God desires that we worship Him in spirit and in truth. Not fake, not phony, not some artificial... It's not just a song. Worship is not just a song. It's the core of who you are. You can be worshiping and not singing at all. You can be worshiping and not talking at all. Because it is the most intimate part of us. It's the part that we can only give to our Lord and the scripture tells us of this lady this woman of the city who saw Jesus was at a Pharisee's house eating and she came just like many people would stop by because they knew Jesus was somewhere and they were so intrigued by him because he was so special you know he did these mighty miracles I don't know if she saw him at another you know, in the crowd as when he was healing somebody else. I don't know if she heard about what she he had done for Mary Magdalene. I don't really know how she heard about Jesus and about who Jesus was. But she knew who he was. And she came in reverencing him. And she never said a word. She just stood behind him, behind him crying, holding a, a jar, a alabaster box of ointment of expensive perfume it was the most valuable thing tangibly that she owned but the most valuable part she gave was her worship and she knelt down and she wept and cried and worshiped him and washed his feet with her tears and the ointment from that alabaster box and she just honored him and reverent him and anointed his feet with her tears like she did and the people in the room were indignant well look at here who is she if he was any good if he was any prophet he would know what type of woman this was you know she's a sinner she shouldn't be doing that what kind of man is he 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 ought to know he shouldn't be consorting with people of that kind you know sometimes people just don't get it in their eyes, right before their eyes, was somebody showing worship and honor to the Lord, and they didn't know. And Jesus had to tell them, listen, I walked in here 
Nobody honored me. Nobody showed great hospitality to me since I've been here. You didn't offer me anything to drink. You didn't, you didn't honor me. You didn't worship me. This woman washed my feet when I walked in. This woman, she has not ceased to honor me and worship me since I walked in. And he had to tell them, say, listen, what about this? If a creditor had t two people that owed him money, maybe one owed 500 and the other one owed 50, and he said, hey, your debt is canceled, which one would be the one that would be the most grateful? And they, one of them answered, I guess, the one who had the, the most to pay back. The one with the 500. He said, you answered correctly. Because the person with the most to lose is the person that should be giving the most. That is going to be forgiven the most. And he said, for that reason, this woman honored me the most. She has given me the most. And she has been forgiven of all of her sins from today on. Told her to go in peace. And that's a lesson for us to learn. That whether we have a little or a lot, it's not for anybody to judge. But it is for us to always give our all. Especially, you know, when, like when we come into the house of the Lord, you know, sometimes we can just kind of get into the song and just, you know, and get into the beat and, and just enjoy it and forget to really honor the Lord and worship Him. We forget to yield ourselves sometimes. Or even at home, we just pray, Lord, you know how we can do, pull out the gimme list. Lord, gimme this and Lord, gimme that. Don't forget my children. Don't forget my husband. Don't forget my wife. Don't forget my mama, my daddy and cousin. You know, you know, we start going down the line of the things that we want and we haven't honored him and worshiped him. But when we have so much that we need to lay on him, oh my goodness, all the things that we're not, all the things that we need to be that we aren't yet, we need to come and bring our whole self. It's the most valuable part of us. Our worship and bring our whole self to him and honor him and love him. And because we know who he is. We realize without him, we can't do anything. But through him, we can do all things. And that is the most genuine, the most intimate part of us. Nobody knows that part of us like God knows us. We haven't shared that with anyone. He knows. See, you can share so much about yourself with a person. And you can say, oh, they know me. Oh, but they know me. Oh, but nobody knows you like God knows you. God remembers when. <laughs> the number of hairs on your head. He knows the, every part of your being where you were born, why you were born, where you come from, your good, the good about you, the bad about you. But he loves us in spite of. And he wants in return that price of your freedom. Don't, 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 don't take lightly this freedom. In order for that woman to be free, she walked in bound. She walked in heavy. She walked in crying, but she gave all she had, and she left that house free, and free indeed. And I know how that feels. I know how that feels. You might be one of those. You might know how that feels, too. And when you can tell somebody honestly, listen, give your all. Give it to him and let him free you. Of all of your shortcomings, of all of your, whatever it is you're carrying, you don't have to carry that weight any longer. But you're going to have to pay to be free. Give your all to him. Not money. It's not the money. It's your all. It's your heart. It ain't free. You got to give something. Give him your heart. That's all he wants from you. I hope you share that with somebody today. Don't forget, freedom really ain't free. You got to give yourself. You got to give your all. Until the next time, be blessed 
and I hope to see you real soon.